All right. So I will talk now about mutable and immutable objects in Java. So assume I have this class mutable integer. It's just a class that stores an integer. Okay, the constructor of this class mutable int takes in one integer and assigns it to the variable number. That's all it is. And then there's a two-string method to just return that number as a string. Okay, that's all it is. Um, let's see this mutable versus immutable objects class. I have a main method in which well, first the explanation, right? So immutable objects is every time an object is modified, it actually creates another object with the new value, okay? So every time one, one of these objects is changed, okay, it actually, it actually it's changed in a different part of the memory. So let's look at the example here. You have integer, which is an object that comes with Java. It's, a, it's an immutable object. <clears throat> So if I have an integer a, which is the new integer 3, it's the number 3, and then I have a new integer b, which is equals to a, okay, so b now is 3 as well. Well, what I do, because these are immutable, when I say integer b equals a, what this is doing is actually creating a memory, a separate address. It's not the same address as a. It's creating a separate address in memory, copying all the contents of a, I'm putting them on that address. So B is now pointing to not the actual integer A, but the value of the integer A. It's pointing to an integer 3. And then when I say A equals A plus 5, right? When I increase A by 5, what happens is where whatever that memory location that A was at, okay, is no longer valid. And another memory location actually increases the integer 3 by 5, and then it, it has an 8. So another memory location acquires the value 8. So again, B is pointing to a memory location that has the value 3, and A is now pointing to a memory location that has the value 8, and it's different from the memory location at which it started, okay? It's a different memory location. So think about that for a second. A started with a memory location that had the value 3, B points to another memory location that has a copy of A, a copy of the number 3, and then this A, we're changing the memory location. Instead of pointing to this integer 3, is now going to point to an integer that contains the number 8. Okay? So when you print A equals something, A will be equals 8, and B will be equals to 3 because B never changed. Okay? That is what an immutable object will do. A never change. Every time we did something with A, either increase it or assign it, a copy of whatever was uh, in A at this point was uh, executed. Okay. Now, mutables, on the other hand, the contents of the objects live in a memory address, and all the mutable objects point to that memory address. So if they change it, it's the same memory address to which all the other objects point to that is changed. Let's see the example. So mutable integer now, m, is a new mutable integer, integer 3. This is analogous to that uh, piece of code there. A mutable integer p will have m. At this point, p actually points to the exact same memory address that m. So basically, p and m are the same object, OK? They're pointing to the same space in memory. So then if I say m.number, if I increase the number of m by 5, Okay, P, P's number also changes by 5 because P is virtually pointing to whatever num M was. So when I say M.number uh, plus equals 5, I'm also changing P's number. Okay, I'm not making any additional copies anywhere. I'm actually changing the object M and P, which points to M. Therefore, when I print M and P, they will print the same value, which is 8, because it was 3 initially, then I changed the number I added 5 to that number. So if we compile this and run it, we'll see that a equals 8 and b equals 3, whereas in the mutable case, m equals 8 and p equals also 8. Okay? So in this case, the instance of, of, a, of an object is immutable. This instance will never change. If you change it, really what's changing, you're making it point to a different address in memory that contains the new value. That's all you're doing. 
and B, when you're making it kind of point to A, what you're really doing is point to another integer that has the value 3. When the mutable, with the mutable objects, you know, the objects themselves can mutate, they don't copy themselves over in memory every time you do something with them.